Banjo-Kazooie and Pikmin are two wildly different masterpieces. But what if they were somehow combined to create some sort of mega masterpiece? Enter Tinykin. In Tinykin, you play as an archaeologist named Milodane who travels to a mysterious planet in search of humanity's origins. When he arrives, he finds himself trapped inside an enormous house, which he must escape by assembling a crude spaceship based on some blueprints left by the house's previous owner, Ardwin. Each room of the house just so happens to be occupied by one or more insect factions that require you to do them some favors before they're willing to give up one of the blueprint's components. There are shield bugs who need you to repair a stereo system in order to play a CD, ants who need you to gather ingredients for baking a cake, and even stoner silverfish who need help throwing a disco bubble bath party. Yeah, not even kidding. As I alluded to at the start of the video, Tinykin's gameplay can best be described as a unique blend of Banjo-Kazooie and Pikmin. Each level or room of the house is an enormous sandbox teeming with collectibles, NPCs, and quests. The most important collectible, and the one that gives the game its name, is the Tinykin themselves. Much like Pikmin, these little guys follow you around, can be thrown at objects to interact with them, and come in several different varieties, each with its own unique role slash ability. Purple Tinykin, for example, are strong and can push and carry large objects, whereas the red Tinykin can destroy certain objects by literally exploding on contact with them. What's most unique about Tinykin is that there are no real enemies, nor are there very many hazards. The challenge mostly comes from figuring out how to navigate the vast environments in order to reach important items. Fortunately, Milodane has some tricks up his sleeve to help make this process a little easier. For starters, he has a bar of soap that acts like a skateboard and can even be used to grind across these long silk lines. He also has a bubble glider that lets him soar through the air to cover long distances. And in later levels, he can even use green Tinykin as makeshift ladders to reach high places. I've already mentioned how large the levels are, but what's most impressive is how well designed they are. Not only are they incredibly vertical, but they're also full of unlockable shortcuts like climbable strings and the aforementioned grindable silk lines that help make backtracking a breeze. Each room almost ends up feeling like its own Metroidvania experience, especially since Tinykin don't follow you from one room to the next, so you have to start each one from scratch. You enter a room, find Tinykin, reach new places, unlock shortcuts, and so that's what feels like a Metroidvania to me. It's very cool. The sheer verticality also plays perfectly into the collect-a-thon aspects because the higher you go, the more items you can see, making it much easier to locate any you might have missed or even plan a route from point A to B. If there's one complaint I have with the game, it's that near the end it starts to feel a little too formulaic and forgiving. It's fun discovering and using new types of Tinykin, for example, but not once did I ever feel challenged to use them creatively in order to solve a puzzle or overcome some sort of obstacle. Since the levels themselves are mostly devoid of hazards and completely devoid of enemies, it would have been nice to have encountered more challenging elements later on to spice things up. There are also some side quests that are sort of copy-pasted from room to room with no real meaningful changes, like finding and delivering mail, for example. I never really found these all that engaging or interesting and would much rather have seen more variety, like maybe a soap bar race against a speedy insect, 
or even some sort of makeshift boss battle in which you have to use all of your Tinykin's different abilities to prevail. Thankfully, the charming characters and environments mostly help make up for the lack of challenge and quest variety. Plus, it's just lots of fun climbing, soaring, and exploring, and watching your little tiny can go to work. There's also a great dynamic soundtrack with different instruments that come in and out depending on where you are in each level, which is yet another element that reminded me a lot of Banjo-Kazooie. Ultimately, Tinykin is the very definition of a feel-good game. There's no real penalty for dying, there are very few ways to die, and there's virtually no pressure at any point. It's a game that's all about the joy of exploring and collecting in huge, fascinating environments inhabited by quirky characters. If that sounds like it's for you, then I highly recommend checking it out. It's up there as one of my favorite indie games of the year, if not one of my favorite games of the year, period. If you have any questions about the game, or if you've played it and would like to share your thoughts, be sure to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from some of you guys and see what you think about it compared to Banjo-Kazooie and Pikmin, and whether you liked it or not, whether you minded the lack of challenge, and just what your thoughts are on the game overall. As always, thank you guys for watching. This is Chubbs, signing out.